one of the things that I do when I'm looking at a market, and, and I've had great success with this, is I will, through our local U.S. Commercial Service Office, contact the commercial service offices in the countries I may be interested in, and then start a dialogue that way. They'll start researching that market for me. We can maybe do an initial market search or develop it into a gold key. But, you know, we can sit down and talk about what I'm looking for, uh, what my product is, the kind of customer that I'm looking for and they'll help me research that and, and kind of narrow things down so that, that when it comes time to make those contacts, I have the right people to talk to. It's the quality and vetting if these people even have a, an address. And using the commercial service is, was probably our number one way of easily vetting down a client rather than, uh, I call it, chasing rabbits. It avoids chasing rabbits or throwing darts on a wall. It's an easy way to find out if a client is uh, valid. What I found a lot of times is that small businesses and small manufacturers are best partnered with other small companies overseas. Sometimes uh, companies make the mistake of thinking that they should partner with someone who has you know, hundreds of different products that they represent, but a lot of times you don't get the focus that you need from them when the overseas partner is too unfocused or has too much on their plate. Another thing about identifying partners is, is never second guess where you might find them because the world is getting to be a much smaller place. Uh, a really great example is I was at a farm show in Kansas one time and I did not talk to anybody for three days except a young gentleman from South Africa and as it turns out I was going to South Africa about a month later and that relationship developed into my first sale in South Africa which is uh, developed into several other dealers that came from that so never never kind of second guess where you might find them and, and never you know close that door on, on options of where to look. The market's full of good products but people buy from people and if and that's one thing in the international market is there's a level of trust and until you build that as I've said you can you can talk to people on Skype you can talk to people all day long on the phone but until you show up in country at a trade show and meet them in person and develop a relationship, a lot of times your international sales won't go anywhere. Finding a good partner really comes down to you knowing your business. If you can give clear guidance and instructions and you know clearly the kind of company you're looking for and you can communicate that to me, I can find those guys. If they exist and I can give you a selection then it comes to down to your own judgment as to which one of those uh, is a company that's for you. The thing about international sales, uh, you never know which one's legit, which one's uh, real. Uh, the key thing is respond to all of them, ask the appropriate questions, quickly qualify them and move on. You know, I go back to one guy uh, in the one country that started off with four units. That was one email. You know, he answered their questions correct and we continue to follow up with them. Uh, the U.S. Commercial Service can also help screen potential partners. Sometimes you're approached by someone who wants to be your partner and you need to make sure they're legitimate. Uh, U.S. Commercial Service with our foreign offices, we're able to do background checks on potential customers to um, make sure that they're, they are who they say they are. We can check their references, we can get financial statements and prepare a report for you called an international company profile, uh, which is basically a, a vetting. Uh, our overseas offices can even interview your potential partner and ask them specific questions that you want us to screen them for. Partner management, ongoing partner management is as crucial and I see it as the next stage. Once you've selected a partner, now you need to move into the role of, uh, quite simply put, business planning. And a, business, a proper business plan needs a vision. You both need to know where you want to be and what we use like a three-year horizon as to where we want to be with this product in this region uh, with that particular partner in three years. They also need to know that. And that vision then um, leads to a plan, a fixed plan that's on a piece of paper. It's got quantifiable you know, numbers. Next level is then is the management of the execution. So you've got a plan. Now you've got to stay in touch with them. And then the last thing that is important on a, on a regular basis is the, the review. So you've got to look at what that plan was all about, how you executed against it, and execution is never the same as the plan. So that's okay. 
you know, sometimes you exceeded it, you mustn't ignore that. You've got to go in and find out why you exceeded it, why you did well, and repeat that same, you know, great thing you were doing and get rid of the stuff that you were doing bad. So there's four elements to it. There's a vision, there's a plan, execution, and then review. We call it the Viper strategy. Be flexible uh, and be open-minded. There's no one way of doing business. Uh, don't don't in, insist on one specific mode of payment because that's how you've always done it. Things may be done differently in this particular market. Get to know your customer. Uh, they want to trust you as much as you want to trust them. They're looking for a long-term uh, relationship. Um, come prepared with goodwill. Uh, come having done your homework. Uh, talk to the US Commercial Service and any of your business colleagues who may have already worked in the market so that you, you know what local conditions are like.